Uh, my name is Ken Ulmer. I'm part of the Toll and Go program and the Safe Clear Management Group. I was one of the founders of the original Safe Clear program in 2005. I actually did the um, pilot program on I 10 that now is considered Toll and Go and went to citywide and now is being expanded to even the county. This is Zach Rash. Zach is a driver that's actually on the street today um, and is going to be here to help me answer questions may interject in some of the things we're talking about, and he did this amazing presentation that we're going to present to you guys here today. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, if you have a question during this, raise your hand, I'll call on you. Um, please make sure your cell phones are turned off. Is everybody in here signed in? Did everybody sign in on the sign-in sheet? Everybody has an SOP in front of them, right? Everybody knows what an SOP is, Standard Operating Procedure, right? So every first responder who comes to a scene has an SOP. This is our SOP. There's not a police officer, a fireman, or any other first responder that doesn't do everything that he does according to an SOP. It's their instructions and directions for what to do and how to handle just about any situation that comes up. The Toligo program and Toligo SOP for training is what we'll be going over today. This is a mission statement. A mission statement is basically saying what are we doing and why are we doing it. Uh, mission statement for Toligo is a Toligo operator's mission is to monitor roadways and identify motorists in need of emergency services, facilitate the rapid removal of motorists and or vehicles from the roadway, thereby reducing secondary crashes, injuries, and deaths, provide these services in a manner that demonstrates the highest level of safety, professionalism, integrity, and honesty. We're going to talk about all of this as we go to through this program today, but a couple of things I want you guys to remember is, Number one, this is a federally funded program, which means federal dollars are actually paid for each one of these $60 tows that you guys do. There's a couple of caveats that go along with that. One of them is documentation. So if we don't have good documentation, the federal government will cut off those funds. If we do things that are against this SOB or directly <clears throat> create problems for the uh, funding through the federal government, we will lose our funding for this program. One of the most important things I think is, you guys are in Trainstar today. Have any of you guys ever been to Trainstar before? How many people have actually been here to Trainstar before? Have you ever been on the floor, Trainstar? Floor is pretty amazing. There's a whole wall of cameras and they're watching every camera in the entire camera system on Trainstar. There are hundreds of cameras that are on freeways and roadways and those cameras turn and rotate and things like that. And there's an entire group of people in separate lines all the way back to the back of the room. Those will include everything from the news media, police agencies, um, it even includes some flood control people, um, text of Texas Department of Transportation, all sorts of people that are on the floor monitoring those cameras. We are very fortunate in that the state of Texas, specifically the city of Houston, initiated this program and brought tow operators in as a part of this first responder program. And that's very unique. Most other cities, I'm aware of no other city, country, state, or anybody that actually brings tow operators into the degree that this program has. There's a lot of responsibility that's on our shoulders when we've been given this opportunity. Um, that responsibility is to be professional, to make sure that we monitor the funds that we spend and that none of those funds get spent that shouldn't be, and to make sure that these funds last for the longest period of time possible. Um, so that's why this program is so important. It's looked at by people across the nation all the time as to how, what a good job that we do. And does everybody understand what traffic incident management is? Y'all understand what traffic man man incident management is all about? It's, I mean, why do we move cars off the freeway? Why, why do we move cars? Safety, yeah. And not only that, um, safety, we reduce the number of accidents. Generally, we're reducing secondary accidents. So when we move something that is a primary incident, whether it be a consumer broke down on the side of the road or flat tire or just an abandoned car, they create backups in traffic. And by doing that, we're reducing secondary accidents. So some statistics that I'll throw out to you, um, at least six and as many as eight of all accidents are actually secondary. There was a primary thing that caused it. I mean, how many times have you guys seen that you'll go to one accident scene, there'll be two more accidents in the backup of traffic 
Those are all secondaries, okay? So that's the purpose of this program, is to rapidly move these vehicles off the roadway and prevent those secondary accidents, reduce the number of fatalities, get people off the roadways, and hopefully help the roadways travel more safely and quickly, okay? So that's the purpose of the program. Um, as I said again, if you have questions as we go through, raise your hand, we'll do everything we can to answer them. Tow operator dispatch phone number. This is the phone number that you, as tow operators, will use. We've dedicated this number to you. We want you to not give this number out to consumers or people that you come in contact with or anyone else because the tow operator, the uh, dispatchers on the floor at Transstar know when this number rings that it's one of you guys calling and they need to make sure that they answer that phone as quickly as possible. I'm not gonna say that always happens. Those dispatchers can get really busy at inopportune times. But that's the goal of this number, so don't give it out to other people. All right, finding the tow. So our job is to proactively monitor radios and freeways. Uh, we can use Waze, Transstar Incident Map, City of Houston Active Incidents, DM Wilson Info, all sorts of other things that you can utilize to locate where something is happening. Um, some of these apps would be on your phone. Some of you guys may have laptops in your truck that are connected to data cards. Um, you could be monitoring websites and things of that nature. It's our job to try to identify as many of these incidents as we possibly can. When we identify those accidents, we're gonna talk about what we do, but first we have to find those incidents. So monitor your police radios, respond to them, travel up and down your segment section and try to locate and identify vehicles that may need service and then we're going to talk about what you do when you do find those. But the first goal is to find them. Lanes included in no-cost tows. Those are the main lanes, HOV and hot lanes, shoulder lanes, entrance and exit ramps, the area between the freeway and the feeder road, uh, also known as a safety buffer zone, and inside curb to inside curb. By saying that, when we say inside curb to inside curb, the easiest way for us to explain it, because as you know, for Houston freeways can be very complicated for, depending on where you're at. But the inside curb is, if you're driving on a service road, you have multiple lanes on a service road, the inside curb is the one closest to the freeway. From that curb to the other inside curb is all included in the tow and go area. That means the grassy area, if there's a grassy area between that curb, that means all of the freeway lanes and anything else that falls in between those two curbs. When we talk about entrance and exit ramps, it can get very confusing because we all know some of those ramps can be miles long. But if you use an imaginary line, a lot of times we'll help clarify this for you of that inside curb and where it would be if it followed and goes through that entrance or exit ramp, that's the area that would be covered by towing it. If you have questions about where that area actually is or if where you're at is in that area, you can always call Transstar and they should be able to get you an answer on whether that area is covered or not. There are some very confusing areas of the tow and go program just because of the intermingling of freeways. Another thing that I suggest is to get with other prime contractors whose area is but up to yours and talk to those contractors and work out where your two areas break. Okay, and that way you can both be under the same understanding as to what you're gonna do. Put it in writing, maybe send an email or have your boss send an email to that other prime contractor and get something in writing between the two of you and then distribute it to the driver so that everyone knows. We know some of those areas are very confusing. All right, before you arrive on the scene, have your tow book ready when you arrive on scene to snap a photo as soon as practical. Even though, even through the windshield, once the photo is snapped, arrival time, date, and location are captured, and you would always go to the tow book new on-scene call, okay? Why do you use the new on-scene call? It was developed specifically for this program, and the reason that we developed it was we needed to capture the location and the time that you arrived the quickest and easiest way possible. It's not captured when you click on new on-scene call. It's captured when you take a photo. That's why the first thing that comes up is the photo on new on-scene call. So that's why we suggest you even take it through the windshield of the truck. Once you take that photo, time and date are captured, okay, and location by GPS coordinates. So it's really important that you do that as soon as you arrive. 
Nothing is captured until you do that. Once you capture this, you have all of those times in the recorded record, and you can go back to them. Okay? Pictures. Include pictures of the vehicle on the freeway and the HPD or Harris County map officer on scene if there is one. If you cannot take pictures on the freeway, you are required to put in notes why you were not able to take the picture. Try and get roughly four photos, including a photo of the drop location. Okay? I tell all of my drivers for my company, if you don't have four photos, you don't have enough. Photos that you take in this program are photos that are uploaded to Google. As long as you take them on the Towbook app, they are uploaded to Google. You can erase those from your phone. They will still remain in that uh, Google Photos and are still accessible through your uh, Towbook app. It's very, very important that you get these photos and you get them as rapidly as possible. Uh, one of the things, um, when you arrive on the scene, open your Towbook app, new on-scene call, and snap a photo to timestamp your arrival, time, and location. Tip to take photos via Towbook app instead of uh, your phone camera app. The reason that we say this is, and you've all heard this, once you take a photo, it never goes away, and that's absolutely the truth. The reason we emphasize this so much that you take them in the app, we do not want you to go to your photos of your phone and pull those photos over to Towbook because mistakes can happen. They have happened. And we had photos that you may not have wanted anyone to see that wind up getting uploaded to Transtar. And this happened. It is not something we're teaching that ever happened. And a very inappropriate photo got shared to the RIMS, um, to the RIMS system. And it was very hard to get that photo out of RIMS. You can imagine that not only our dispatchers see these photos, but Harris County Sheriff's Department, HPD, lots of other entities that are here at Transtar have access to those photos. You certainly wouldn't want some photos that are on your phone. I guarantee everybody in here has some photos. I'm not saying they're explicit, but you have some photos on your phone you'd prefer not everybody in the world see. So please take them in the Towbook app. Before exiting the truck, put on your safety vest, have all appropriate IDs displayed, and bring the Towbook guidelines. Everybody in here should have a set of tow-and-go guidelines in their trucks. I introduce yourself and present tow-and-go guidelines to the motorist. This is required under the program. Prior to clear to tow, instruct occupants to rein inside the vehicle with seat belts buckled. This is an opportunity for you guys to sell the program. Have your tow-and-go ID displayed. Use those motorist bill of rights to hand to those consumers to give them confidence in what you're doing. If they have questions about the program, if they have concerns about whether you're really going to give them a free tow, provide that to them right away. That's your opportunity to give them something that gives them some confidence in what we're doing. And remember, being a federally funded program, we need to sell this program for everybody we come in contact with. We want you to give a bill of rights to people you even don't tow. If you come in contact with them, give them the bill of rights so they understand the program. The more people you come in contact with that understand what this program is all about, the better it is. So educate these people a little bit with giving them that information. It also gives them confidence in what we're doing. We all know as tow operators that not every consumer you come in contact with is super thrilled to see you, okay? And the towing industry doesn't have the best reputation from a consumer standpoint in the world. This is our opportunity to sell ourselves in something really good, nothing bad at all. We're providing a service to save these people's lives. Use that opportunity to sell the program. All right, paper tags. Paper tags are a huge problem for all of us. There are lots of falsified paper tags out there. Um, you must put the tag number in as a license plate. You must include the state that the paper tag was issued. Um, you must input the VIN of the vehicle. If it has a paper tag, this can be done once you have cleared the freeway. If there's a paper tag, we need a picture of the VIN on the dash or the VIN on the side of the door. The reason that we do this is because about 50% of the paper tags you come in contact with are on a vehicle that they're not supposed to be on. Or they've been purchased illegally and they're, someone's using them because they're part of car won't pass inspection or you know, they can't get registration receipt, whatever the case may be. Texas Department of Motor Vehicles knows this is a problem. They're addressing it and trying to fix it. But it is a huge problem for our program because there again, we have to document every consumer we come in contact with, every vehicle that we've towed, transferred, moved, uh, had any interaction with, 
And we can only do that if we have good information. So your rule of thumb should be, if you see a paper tag, always take a picture of the VIN as one of your photos. And I would suggest having four more photos, that picture of the actual VIN on the car will save you if you will actually add that to your uh, array of photos that you have on your towbook app. Uh, one of the things that happens when you guys have a tow that is in question, like let's say for instance you forgot something on that information or you didn't have a completed address where you dropped it, is they go back to your towbook app and look at it and see what did you provide them. Do you have pictures? Do you have a consumer contact number? This will really help you in having a picture of that VIN because if there's any question whatsoever, like I said, 50% of those uh, paper tags don't come back when they run them, their question is answered by having a picture of that VIN. On scene, call train start to request incident number, enter the incident number into tow book and wait for authorization to tow. Trainstar has a handful of questions they will ask in order to start their incident report. What is your location? What's the make and model of the vehicle? What is the license plate of the vehicle? And what state is it from? What is your tag record ID, number in your medallion or chip of the truck? Must have a clear to tow with any photos necessary to identify the vehicle and location before driver is allowed to hook up and load the vehicle. So a couple of things about this. There are multiple technological programs that are coming into play here. Number one technological is the Tobook app itself. Uh, number two is the RIMS system. That is the system that's here at Transtar and that every government uses for things related to a freeway or a roadway. When you see a roadway sign being put up by Texas Department of Motor Vehicles, it's in RIMS that they've taken that sign out there to the scene and put it up. So RIMS and Towbook are totally different operating apps and programs. They do not talk together without having some inner link. The inner link is that incident number. So when you enter that incident number, it allows your Towbook app to link with RIMS and the dispatchers on the floor can see everything then that you put into RIM, into Towbook, and it becomes a part of RIMS. But until you put that incident number in, none of those two talk to each other. They cannot communicate, they cannot see each other, they can't do anything until the incident number's in and it's the right incident number. Transtar generates thousands of incident numbers for everything that happens on a roadway, whether it be flooding or whether it be a, an emergency sign that they put out, whatever the case may be, this incident number has to be in tow book for those two to talk. So that's extremely important. Uh, correct fields. So select the correct accounts for your tow and go contractor. Safe, clear, tow and go. Bill to City of Houston. Be sure to include the incident number in the correct spot. So a few things have to happen for tow book to operate correctly. Number one, you have to have the account as safe clear. In your tow book app, you will have the account listed as safe clear. In the bill to, you must have City of Houston or Harris County Sheriff's Department. If you don't put those two pieces of data in linked to a correct incident number, it is impossible for everything to work because the program itself, Towbook, knows when you put those three things in that it owes you an authorization number. Okay, it knows that it owes you an authorization number because it sees those other three things as there. And that will make the program work as seamlessly as possible. But it's very important that you have these three things, at the very least, correct on every single tow book entry. If a motorist agrees to the tow, once received clear to tow, secure the motorist and passengers inside the tow truck. Do not move the vehicle with the customer in the car under any circumstances. Tow the vehicle to a safe location. If the motorist does not feel safe at the first drop location, the driver should attempt to find another safe location or take them to the storage facility. At 3 o'clock in the morning, we don't want you to leave the motorist at a place that they couldn't get any emergency services if they needed it. Um, sometimes this could even happen during the day. It's a 110 degree day. You don't want to leave them somewhere where they might not be able to get you know, call for help or whatever the case may be if their cell phone died. So make sure the motorist feels comfortable about where you're leaving them. If it's a woman or someone who could be, you know, in questionable health, an older person, something along those lines, take that into consideration when you take them to a location and drop them off. Would you feel good leaving your mother or your daughter or your sister in that location? If not, 
think of a better place to take them. Remember, it's our responsibility to get them to a safe location. Okay, if a motorist does not need a tow, report the incident within the tow book app to track and document the tow and go, motorist assist, no fee, and do not bill to City of Houston. The tow truck should call TrainStar for an incident number for statistical tracking. This is extremely important. Remember, the federal government's looking at this program and going, okay, we've put millions of dollars out there into this tow and go program, what's it getting us? They don't contact motorists direct and talk to them. They go, oh my God, this is the best program ever. They look at statistical data. So the statistical data is what they have to rely on. We have meetings every single month where all of this statistical data is brought forward and looked at. How quickly did we respond? How quickly did we clear the scene? How many interactions with consumers did we have? We have to track this statistical data. Even if you have a police tow slip, you still need the statistical data. If you came into contact with someone and they were changing a flat tire and you gave them traffic control or helped them put the last couple of nuts on, get an incident number. The whole purpose of this program is statistical data. If we don't have it, we don't show that we did anything. So we all know that you may come in contact with three or four motorists before you actually wind up towing one, get that statistical data. It's extremely important. If a motorist refuses to tow, call TrainStar to inform them of refusal, possible IMU interaction with the motorist, tow operator to call law enforcement to the scene if necessary. What we mean by possible IMU involvement is there are officers on the floor at TrainStar that are authorizing these tows. They may very well talk to the consumer to explain to them this is a legitimate program, you've been given a bill of rights, you could feel comfortable, more comfortable if you call the phone number on the bill of rights and talk to someone, or possibly that officer can convince them that this is a, I mean, we know when you pull up on a scene and go, this isn't gonna cost you anything. I'm, I'm here from the government, I'm here to help you, so this isn't gonna cost you anything, okay? It may create some concern from a consumer. It's our job to sell this program. This is an amazing program. We're here to help you to save your life, hopefully get you out of a very uh, di difficult situation that's extremely dangerous. It's our job to sell this program. We have found that if you do a good job of selling the program and presenting yourself in a professional manner, your number of refusals will go dramatically down. Um, when this program caused consumers to have to pay when we weren't funded, we had lots of refusals. But now that this is fully funded, we should have no refusals if we do a good job in selling the program. If law enforcement is on the scene and requests a tow truck, Metro, MAP, and HPD MRT units are not law enforcement and cannot authorize a tow. Tow operators should take additional photos of the officer if possible and his law enforcement vehicle with shop number and identifying markings. Tow operator to get the name of the officer and his unit number. The reason that we tell you Metro MAP and uh, HPD MRTs are not police officers is because state law requires a police officer to authorize any non-consent tow. And even though the tows you're doing are only $60 that you're being paid for, they are still non-consent tows. And under state law, they must be authorized by a police officer. So these MRT and these Metro MAP units, they're great to help you. They're a great resource, but they can't authorize a tow because of that state law. So it's very important that we adhere to all these laws so that no problems arise in the future. If law enforcement is on scene and orders the vehicle to be moved, move the vehicle immediately. Obtain law enforcement unit number and inform TransStar for verification and record it in notes of your tow book app. Call TransStar and inform them the tow operator was directed to immediately move the vehicle. So if you roll up and a police officer has hooked this thing up, we're in a bad spot, get it out of the way. I would still snap a photo with my on-scene app so that you've got that time, date, and location. And you would also tell that officer, look, I need to just Take a picture real quick of your car so that I can prove that I was here. And any time an officer has questions or things about that, I'm not telling you to get out and you know pose in the freeway and get a picture of his car. I'm just telling you get the pictures as quickly as you, as you possibly can and as accurate as you can and get out of harm's way. We don't want anyone, police officer, tow operator, or citizen, to get hurt in this job that we're trying to do. The whole goal of the program is to save people's lives. So we're just suggesting that you do everything that you can to document where you're at. Remember, st stats and statistics are all we've got to rely on 
to look at how successful this program is. Unhook and unload the vehicle. Uh, this is post tow. Unhook and unload the vehicle provide contract services to the motorist if needed. Example, flat tire change if the motorist has all necessary equipment. Take them to a gas station if they think they're out of gas. Ask the customer for the contact information, name and phone number. Note, no soliciting tips is allowed. Receiving tips is fine, but do not ask the motorist for tips. By this I mean, do not take a uh, bucket up to the dash of your truck with please give tips or, you know, need, need food or anything like that. If a consumer wants to tip you for this great job, and I get drivers tell me all the time, yeah, these, these consumers tip me 20 bucks, that's perfectly fine. But we don't want the last thing that a consumer remembers about the interaction that we have with them, that we pressured them for a tip. We've all been pressured for tips before. It's not a very good scenario. And you, you leave with a feeling of being taken advantage of. And this is our opportunity to sell an amazing program. Um, also, when you ask the consumer for their contact information, their phone number, uh, one of the things that you can tell them is we're going to text your receipt. That's the way that you will get your receipt if they're uncomfortable with giving you their contact information. Uh, always try to change the tire if a consumer is there and has uh, all of their uh, necessary things change the tire, like the actual spare with air in it, things like that. We're not telling you you have to use their tools. A lot of tow truck operators carry a battery-powered impact. That's perfectly fine. We're just saying, if they have the necessary things, it's our job to change the tire, and it's included in that fee, there again, leaving that consumer with a great example of what this program does and how important it is. Taking enter notes appropriately within the tow book uh, entry. Be sure to take photos of drop location and surrounding landmarks within the tow book application. If there are any extenuating circumstances, be sure to document it in the notes and call Transtar. Extenuating circumstances could be anything, um, but notes in your tow book app are your best friend. Remember, when you have one of these um, tows that there's a question on, or some information's been left out, or uh, possibly the location is questionable where you were, the thing they go back to is all the data that you've entered. And if you've entered enough data, in many, many cases, they can answer the question without ever contacting you, authorize the tow, we're down the road. Remember, there are thousands of tows being done, so we don't want to clog the whole process up with tows that we have to get explanations on. You don't want an officer having to call you at home going, what happened on this tow? Because number one, you gotta remember it, okay? We come in contact with a lot of people. And number two, it takes up too much time. This program will never work if we don't have all the right information entered and do this in a way that is seamless and as quickly processed as possible. So put lots of information in there. Surrounding landmarks are really good too. If you get a picture of a surrounding landmark, it's very easy to look at that picture and go, oh, well, he was at the, the Circle K. Okay, that's really easy to understand. Um, complete the total entry accurately with the best information available at the time and enter it in the appropriate data fields. Name in the name field, address in the address field, drop location included, etc. Make sure City of Houston is selected under Bill to Account and Safe Clears is selected under uh, the actual account. This information is really important for you to get right. Again, I'm going to talk about this one more time because this is the biggest problem that we have. It comes the end of the month, a tow that you did on the 2nd, and now we're at the 30th and your boss is trying to print out the bill that they're going to send in, and it's extremely important for all of those bills to get in accurately, and your boss looks at it and goes, well, we're missing three toes off of here. Tradestar says we owe for 100, and we've only got 97 on our bill. Why? Now your boss or somebody in your office has to go through and try to figure out why those two bills don't mesh, and one of the important things that nobody realizes is not one single tow-and-go operator is paid, until all bills are presented in accurate and right. Okay? That's very important. Sometimes the mistake took place on the Transtar floor. They're constantly looking at them, trying to correct them. They may have picked the wrong contractor, or maybe they picked the wrong driver, or maybe they had the wrong segment. All of those things are being worked on all the time. So we gotta do our part to make sure that the entry that we create is as accurate as possible. Junk in, junk out is the way things go. Tow book entry must be completed within 30 minutes for no-cost tows and within one hour for others. 
This is really important because the Transtar operators are sitting on the floor, they've got multiple computer screens in front of them, and they're watching all of these incidents that they've got going, okay? You, they may be talking to you, but they're also talking to 10 other tow operators on 10 other segments, and all of those rims tickets stay open until they've been closed. This is why we allow this 30 minutes only. We're tightening this up as tight as we can because until that incident's closed, the dispatcher cannot close that ticket. It has to stay open on their screen. And when we forget one altogether, that means it stays open for days. Okay, sometimes the next day. You're really tired. It's six o'clock in the morning. You just got off and you're going home. You forget to close one. It stays open here until you close it on your end. Okay, so it's really important to try to adhere to that. Do everything that you can to. The other thing is, when you take a picture at the drop location, it time and date stamps it. So it's really important to have that as well, because if you did forget, you've got a time and date stamp as to where you were. Only one fee type will be paid per tow or incident. Cannot be reimbursed for the no-cost tow and then charge the motorist a fee. If motorists decide to be towed to a location of their choice, either before or after the tow operator has left the scene, tow operator must call Transtar back to modify the incident ticket from a no-cost tow to a customer-paid tow, up to the regulated fee amount, depending on where you are. Failure to do so is grounds to be removed from the program. A tow book note should be entered and include the name of the Transtar representative spoken to. This is very important because when you charge the $60 fee, and then let's say, for instance, you gave the motorist a card and said, call me if you wind up needing a tow, and they call you 20 minutes later, and those two happen to cross, or that happens to be one of those motorists that gets a phone call from an officer who says, hey, how was the service that we provided? Well, it was great. The tower took me home. And he goes, wait, took you home? Well, now you have created false information in a federally funded program, and you've got a problem. Okay, so whatever you do, if you got a question about has it been long enough, if a customer were to call you back, call Transtar to ask them. The best thing to do, and I tell my drivers this all the time when they call me and go, hey, should I do this? I go, the best thing to do is call Transtar, get rid of that free tow, do the higher price tow, get paid, but be sure you put a note in your tow book as to who you talk to at Transtar. Because they at Transtar now will go in and take out that authorization payment number. The incident number stays because you had interaction with that customer. Don't double charge, double dip, whatever you want to call it. That puts this whole program in a bad light and could jeopardize our federal funding. I'm having to talk too much. Um, okay. <clears throat> if the motorist requires a tow through another entity, they request a tow through another entity like AAA, their car dealership, maybe their insurance company, some other company that you have an agreement with. Um, <clears throat> this is considered a consent tow. As long as the tow company or the driver can show evidence they were dispatched by another entity, be sure to add notes in tow book to clearly document the tow. <clears throat> so what we're saying here is you have an agreement with a car dealership, you towed this car off for $60, and a couple of hours later, a car dealership calls you and says, hey, go pick up this car, it's on the side of the road. There's nothing wrong with that. You're doing what you're contracted to do with another entity. Document, document, document. Document all of that information. But there's nothing wrong with you in your normal course of business having an agreement with another entity that sends you out to get that car. We're just giving you an example of what you should do. Make sure to send the motorist customer a copy of the tow receipt, electronic or paper, with the price zeroed out. If giving the motorist an electronic receipt, inform the motorist the receipt will be texted to them at the cell phone number they provided. This is really important because under TDLR rules, remember these are non-consent tows, so under TDLR rules, you're required to give them some information that's on the bottom of your receipt. When you text that receipt to them or provide them with a paper copy, that information is on there. It's very unlikely they would want to complain to TDLR, but TDLR doesn't distinguish between happy customer and not happy customer. TDLR says all non-consent tows will get that complaint information. So it's very important that you do this. It's also a good way 
to get that consumer to be comfortable with giving you their phone number. And the phone number is very important because randomly, the agencies that are involved in Tow and Go will call consumers and see how their reaction was to the program. Did you get a bill of rights? Was the driver courteous? Did he do everything that you asked him to do? Was he, did he arrive quickly? Those are really good feedback information we get on this program, and along with statistical data, help the program move forward. Okay, you must have customer name and phone number documented in the appropriate data fields in the Tobook application. You notice we keep talking about putting that information in and putting it in the right place. It's very important to have. If we say it multiple times, it means it's really important. Um, Transstar will reject the tow if you don't have that. If the motorist were to refuse, say you come up to a motorist and they say, I don't even have a cell phone. You know, I'm down and out, I don't even have a cell phone. I don't know who that would be today. But if you run across that, be sure to put in there that the customer refused in that block. Because that way you've told whoever may look at this ticket somewhere down the road, there was a refusal to give you some information. And that's okay. We're not forcing, we're not going to make the customer give us that information if they're not comfortable with it. But you need to tell us why we didn't get it. So put refused in that block. All right. Let's make sure we're on the right. In the event you encounter a situation that involves an incident, a scenario that we have not trained for, an uncooperative agency or officer could even be a customer. Fill out an incident report. There's one attached to the SOP that you have in the very back. Uh, forward this to your supervisor immediately and to the email address listed on the form. Accurate and complete information provided on the incident report will help to resolve problems. This is extremely important. Every time we have one of these meetings, we get lots of tow operators who say, well, we got this problem, we got this problem, we got this problem but they've never documented it. This is a big program that involves multiple different agencies. If we don't know what the problem is, we can't address it. I promise you that we want this program to be as successful as possible. So if you provide us information, we will look into it and try to figure out why. It may be as simple as a police officer doesn't understand what the parameters of the program are. We've had police officers that have suggested that we do a no-cost tow to a consumer on an accident vehicle. You and I know that's not probable. We can't do that. That would be a violation of our contract. When an officer feels that way, don't get in an argument with him. Give him a copy of the Bill of Rights and say, look, contractually, we can't do that. And you may want to send in an incident report just so that that officer can get talked to about how the program really works. They're not going to go to that officer and say, this tow truck driver told me that you told him this. That's not what's going to happen. They're going to use this to constructively make the program better. So give us that information. If you've got people going on your segment that shouldn't, tow operators that aren't licensed, anything like that that's happening, send in these incident reports. Every entity that's involved in this program has an incident reporting system of their own. Our dispatchers on the floor at Transtar have an incident reporting system where if a tow truck operator is not communicating with them properly or not doing things that they need to do, they provide an incident report. So you do the same thing. We need that information to keep on honing this program down and making it as good as it can possibly be. We know this program can be better, but we need the information to help make it better. That's the actual incident form. Uh, that is on the end of your um, SOP. You can copy this form. I would caution you to put as much information in here as you possibly can. Those incident reports get emailed and they wind up at the person who, sometimes I will get those, sometimes um, one of the other uh, tow and go providers will get those, not providers, but uh, tow and go people will get those. They will get sent to auto dealers depending on what the issue is or the question is. Um, but put as much information in there as you possibly can so that we can understand what you're trying to tell us. Date, time, location, who you talked to, who the officer was. Include pictures if you need to. Flip it over on the back. This is extremely important for us to be able to fix things that frustrate you when you come in contact with them. Because if you don't tell us about them, we don't know about them. So this is really important. Be sure to tell your bosses to send this stuff in. Email it in. Email it in yourself. 
if you talk to a totally good dispatcher and she has information on it, or you know the incident number that was involved in this particular thing that you got involved in, put that information in this report so that we can go back and look at it. And I can tell you, we here at Transtar, before COVID, we could have meetings here, we literally had meetings where we would go over some of these and pull up that whole incident and see what happened, why, could we have done a better job? Sometimes those incidents that we review are incidents that don't even involve the towing industry. They may be something where, you know, the fire department took a long time on a scene that had hazardous material or where there was an 18 wheeler rollover. We look at those incidents and determine, could we have done a better job? What could we have done better? How can we address this in the future? And what other things can we do to make this a better scenario and get the roadway cleared faster? Okay. Other possible scenarios. <clears throat> if you find a car moving in traffic, most of the same rules will still apply. Take your picture, approach your customer, and tell them to remain in the vehicle. Call Transtar and supply them with this, their information. They will authorize you to move the car immediately and will call you back if they need any information. So that kind of answers your question. But you've got to have that authorization from Transtar to meet federal law. All right. Abandoned vehicles, treat it like any other uh, regular tow go Take your pictures and call Transtar. Specify it is abandoned and take it to the lot. Uh, your first destination that you stop at should be the lot. That's under state law and city and county ordinance that you can't stop somewhere in between. You have to go directly from that uh, abandoned vehicle to the vehicle storage facility. You must call it in, you must get authorization to tow before you actually move that vehicle or hook that vehicle up. Accidents, respond to the accident and snap a picture to document arrival time and location. Clear the roadway when authorized by law enforcement. Always call Transtar for an incident number. A lot of times drivers think, well, I've got a police tow slip, I don't have to call Transtar. Well, you just lost the statistical data when you don't do that. Okay? It's great that you got a police tow slip. That's perfect. You've got everything that you need, but you still need to call Transtar and get that incident number and put it in tow book. And my suggestion is that before you get out of the truck, you snap a picture just to get the date, time, and location on that tow book app, and you don't forget later to enter it in the tow book app. So I suggest that you begin that as soon as you arrive there. Think about this. One of the things you're documenting is your effectiveness on your segment. So if you document that you've arrived on this scene, let's say we all know some of those scenes can take two or three hours or more, you've documented that you're out on that scene and you've been there for that period of time. So say you had a 20-car pileup and you had every truck that you have on your segment on that 20-car pileup trying to clear it, you need to document that all your trucks were there because you're going to be deficient on other parts of your segment and you need to document why you were deficient. So this is really important that you document this information and get as much of it done as possible to document what you've done. Do not leave accident debris on the roadway. The driver must pick up accident debris and or fluids before leaving the scene and dispose of them properly. This is state law, city and county ordinance. If you leave debris, you violate state law and you've also put yourselves in a position where consumers driving down the roadway, look at that and go, some tow operator didn't do their job. Pick up the debris. It's easy, guys. Pick up the debris. Do what you're supposed to do. State law requires it. City and county ordinance required as well. Common mistakes. Only taking a picture of the unit or a close-up of the license plate. Not getting the VIN number from a paper plate. Inaccurate tow and go times. That's a picture. That's a great picture of a license plate. But if that's the only picture in your tow book, how are we going to make heads or tails out of that? Okay? Back to my rule of at least four pictures. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, we all smile, but we get lots of incidents that have one picture just like that. And we're like, okay, what, what is this? I mean, I know it's telling me the license plate, but it doesn't give me any other information. So if you take this photo, that's perfectly fine. Make sure that you have other photos to back up what you've done. Make sure your times are accurate. Make sure that you get a picture of the VIN if you have a paper plate. Sort of make sure we're in the right place. 
Never engage in an argument or confrontation with any citizen or anyone at the scene or any dispatchers. Any arguments with an officer on scene is grounds for immediate removal from the Toledo program. Remember that you are an official representative of the Toledo program. We're out here to show how professional we can be. You all have been given an opportunity to be a part of a program that requires you to live up to a standard that's a lot higher than other tow operators. There was a reason that your companies and yourselves were chosen to do this job because you met a higher level of expectation and you should live up to that level of expectation by not arguing at the scene, not giving an example of what a poor operator would do, but giving an example of what a professional operator would do if something comes up, use the incident form to present it. You must remain calm and do not use any threatening language or abuse the customer in any way. Do not have an arrogant attitude, but be confident, courteous, cooperative, and helpful. Fill out an incident report with your contact information so that we can respond back to you. By this, we mean we all know that consumers are probably having the worst day of their lives when they have an accident. We may have been on four or five accidents that day, but the consumer probably hasn't. So if they're having a bad day. Be cognizant of that. Be professional and respectful to that customer. We all know we come into co customers sometimes that have a very uh, competitive attitude or uh, maybe want to engage in an argument or something along those lines. Avoid that at all costs because you're ruining the whole point of this program, which is having great customer service and getting support from the community for this program. Drivers are prohibited from posting photos or videos from police scenes or of vehicles being towed on social media without permission of auto dealers detail or Harris County Sheriff's Department. Don't post these pictures, okay? I can't say this anymore. You have all seen pictures on social media that you would, don't think should have been posted, right? We've all seen that. When you do things like that, you're degrading the program. And I will tell you, give you a perfect example, there was a very bad fatality on one of the freeways that was a tow and go freeway a tow and go operator took some pictures of the the person who had died on the scene of them in a very bad position obviously they they're deceased those pictures are then available for people to look at you don't want loved ones having to look at those types of pictures and it generally is going to degrade the program and you and your company and this entire industry when you post things like that i know we like to see those pictures Remember, <clears throat> once you take a picture, it's there forever. I know you do Snapchat and you think that picture's gone in three seconds or eight seconds or whatever you put in, but it's not ever gone, okay? It's still there and it can come back to haunt you. All you need to do is look at social media any day and see how things come back to haunt people. Don't put yourself in that position. Examples of good pictures. You can see the police unit in the background. You've got a good picture of the vehicle. This is even a night picture that's a really good example of a picture. Um, always, 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 your rule of thumb should be at least four pictures in every situation. Any less, and you probably don't have enough pictures. Thank you guys for attending. Appreciate it.